The Chevrolet Big Block is a term for a series of large displacement V8 engines that have been developed and produced in the United States from the 1950s to the current day. As American automobiles grew in size and weight following the Second World War, the engines powering them had to keep pace. Chevrolet had introduced its popular small block V8 in 1955, but needed something larger to power its medium duty trucks and the heavier cars that were on the drawing board. Topic: <laughs> W Series Mark 1. The first version of the big block V8 Chevrolet engine, known as the W Series, was introduced in 1958. Chevrolet designed this engine for use in passenger cars and light trucks. This engine had an overhead valve design with offset valves and uniquely scalloped rocker covers, giving it a distinctive appearance. The W Series was produced from 1958 to 1965, and had three displacement options, 348 cu in 5.7 L, available from 1958 to 1961 in cars, and in light trucks through 1964 409 cu in 6.7 L, available from 1961 to 1965, and 427 cu in 7.0 L, available in 1962 and 1963. The W Series engine was made of cast iron. The engine block had 4.84 inch 123 mm bore centers, two bolt main bearing caps, a side oiling lubrication system, the main oil gallery located low on the driver's side of the crankcase, with full flow oil filter, and interchangeable cylinder heads. Heads used on the high performance 409 and 427 engines had larger ports and valves than those used on the 348 and the base 409 passenger car and truck engines, but externally were identical to the standard units. One minor difference between the 348 and 409 427 was the location of the engine oil dipstick, it was on the driver's side on the former and the passenger's side on the latter. No satisfactory explanation was ever offered for why this change was made. However, it did provide a fairly reliable way to differentiate between the smaller and larger versions of the engine. As with the 265 and 283 cu in 4.3 and 4.6 L small block engines, the W series valve gear consisted of tubular steel pushrods operating stud mounted, stamped steel rocker arms. The pushrods also acted as conduits for oil flow to the valve gear. Due to the relatively low mass of the valve train, mechanical lifter versions of the W Series engine were capable of operating at speeds well beyond 6,000 rpm. The combustion chamber of the W Series engine was in the upper part of the cylinder, not the head, the head having only tiny recesses for the valves. This arrangement was achieved by combining a cylinder head deck that was not perpendicular to the bore with a crown piston, which was a novel concept in American production engines of the day. As the piston approached top dead center, the angle of the crown combined with that of the head deck to form a wedge-shaped combustion chamber with a pronounced quench area. The spark plugs were inserted vertically into the quench area, which helped to produce a rapidly moving flame front for more complete combustion. The theory behind this sort of arrangement is that maximum brake mean effective pressure BMEP is developed at relatively low engine speeds, resulting in an engine with a broad torque curve. With its relatively flat torque characteristics, the W engine was well suited to propelling both the trucks and heavier cars that were in vogue in the USA at the time. The W Series was a physically massive engine when compared to the small block Chevrolet engine. It had a dry weight of approximately 665 pounds 302 kilograms, depending on the type of intake manifold and carburetion systems present.
Topic 348. The first iteration of the W series engine was the 1958 Turbo Thrust, 348 cubic inch, 5.7L, originally intended for use in Chevrolet trucks, but also introduced in the larger, heavier 1958 passenger car line. Bore and stroke was four and an eighth in times three and a quarter in 104.8 mm times 82.6 mm, resulting in a substantially oversquare design. This engine was superseded by the 409 CU in 6.7L as Chevrolet's top performing engine in 1961 and went out of production for cars at the end of that year. It was produced through 1964 for use in large Chevrolet trucks. With a four-barrel carburetor, the base turbo thrust produced 250 horsepower, 186 kilowatts. A special tri-power triple two-barrel version called the Super Turbo Thrust produced 280 horsepower, 209 kilowatts. A special turbo thrust Further up the power output to 305 horsepower, 227 kilowatts, with a single large four-barrel carburetor. Mechanical lifters and triple two-barrel carburetors brought the special super turbo thrust up to 315 horsepower, 235 kilowatts. For 1959 and 1960, high output versions of the top two engines were produced with 320 horsepower, 239 kilowatts and 335 horsepower, 250 kilowatts respectively. In 1961, power was again increased to 340 horsepower, 254 kilowatts for the single four-barrel model, and 350 horsepower, 261 kilowatts when equipped with triple two barrels. Topic 409. A409 CU in 6.7L version was Chevrolet's top regular production engine from 1961 to 1965 with a choice of single or 2x4 barrel Rochester carburetors. Bore X stroke were both up from the 348 CU in 5.7L to 4.31 in times 3 and a half in 109.5 mm times 88.9 mm. On December 17, 1960, the 409 engine was announced along with the Impala SS Super Sport model. The initial version of the engine produced 360 horsepower, 268 kilowatts with a single four-barrel Carter AFB carburetor. The same engine was up to 380 horsepower, 283 kilowatts in 1962. A409 horsepower 305 kilowatts version of this engine was also available, developing 1 horsepower per cubic inch with a dual 4-barrel aluminum intake manifold and two Carter AFB carburetors. It had a forged steel crankshaft. This dual quad version was immortalized in the Beach Boys song titled, 409. In the 1963 model year, output reached 425 bhp, 431 PS, 317 kilowatts at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 425 pound-feet, 576 Nm at 4,200 revolutions per minute of torque with the Rochester 2x4 barrel carburetor setup, a compression ratio of 11 to 1, and a solid lifter camshaft. The engine was available through mid 1965 when it was replaced by the 396 CU in 6.5L 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts Mark IV big block engine. In addition, a 340 horsepower 254 kilowatts version of the 409 engine was available from 1963 to 1965 with a single four-barrel cast iron intake mounting a Rochester 4 GC square bore carburetor and a hydraulic lifter camshaft. Topic 427 Z11 
A special 427 cubic inch L version of the 409 engine was used in the 1963 Impala Sport Coupe, ordered under Chevrolet Regular Production Option Z11. This was a special package created for drag races, as well as NASCAR, and it consisted of a 427 CU in L engine with aluminum body parts, and a cowl induction air intake system. The aluminum body parts were fabricated in Flint, Michigan at the facility now known as GM Flint Metal Center. Unlike the later, second-generation 427, it was based on the W Series 409 engine, but with a longer 3.65 in mm stroke. A high-rise, two-piece aluminum intake manifold and dual Carter AFB carburetors fed a 13.5, 1 compression ratio to produce an underrated 430 horsepower 321 kilowatts and 575 pound-feet 780 Nm. 50 RPO Z11 cars were produced at the Flint GM plant. Extant GM documents show 50 Z11 engines were built at the GM Tonawanda engine plant for auto production, and 20 partial engines were made for replacement, over-the-counter use. Unfortunately, there is no evidence from GM that shows 57 cars were built. <laughs> Mark II The so-called mystery motor, known internally as the Mark II or Mark IIS, is a race-only engine produced for the 1963 season. Development began with a 409 CU in 6.7 L version Mark II and ended with a 396 CU in 6.5 L variant. However, only the 427 CU in 7.0 L engine Mark IIS was ever raced. It gained its nickname due to the incredible speeds cars equipped with it attained during its debut being considerably faster than the well-known W Series powered cars. The engine was first used in Mickey Thompson's Z06 Corvettes at Daytona in the 1963 Daytona 250 miles, American Challenge Cup, then in Smokey Unix Chevrolet 1963 Daytona 500 record setting stock cars. This Secret engine was a unique design incorporating aspects of both the W series and the mid-1965 introduced Mark IV referred to in sales literature as the Turbo Jet V8. Topic <laughs> <laughs> Mark III. Packard V8 tooling and production rights were considered for purchase by Chevrolet. Project did not proceed. Topic <laughs> Mark IV. The Mark IV differed from the W Series engine in the placement of the valves and the shape of the combustion chambers. Gone was the chamber in block design of the W Series engine, which caused the power curve to drastically dip above 6,500 rpm, and in its place was a more conventional wedge chamber in the cylinder head, which was now attached to a conventional 90 degree deck. The valves continued to use the displaced arrangement of the W Series engine, but were also inclined so that they would open away from the combustion chamber and cylinder walls, a design feature made possible by Chevrolet's stud-mounted rocker arms. This alteration in valve placement resulted in a significant improvement in volumetric efficiency at high RPM and a substantial increase in power output at racing speeds. Owing to the appearance of the compound angularity of the valves, the automotive press dubbed the engine the porcupine design. As part of the head redesign, the spark plugs were relocated so that they entered the combustion chamber at an angle relative to the cylinder centerline, rather than the straight in relationship of the W series engine. This too helped high RPM performance. Due to the new spark plug angle, the clearance provided by the distinctive scalloped valve covers of the W series was no longer needed, and wide, rectangular covers were used. 
In all forms except the minus one Zwatties Can M model, the rat motor, as it was later nicknamed, small block engine being a mouse motor was slightly heavier than the W series model with a dry weight of about 685 pounds 311 kilograms Aside from the new cylinder head design and the reversion to a conventional 90 degree cylinder head deck angle the Mark IV shared many dimensional and mechanical design features with the W series engine the cylinder block, although more substantial in all respects, used the same cylinder bore pitch bore spacing of 4.84 in mm with a larger 2.75 in mm main bearing dimension, increased from the 2.5 in mm of the older engine in fact, the shorter stroke 348 and 409 crankshafts could be installed with the use of spacer bearings", without modifying the crankshaft. Like its predecessor, the Mark IV used crown pistons, which were castings for conventional models and impact extruded forged, solid skirt types in high-performance applications. Also retained from the W Series design were the race-proven Moraine M400 aluminum bearings first used in the 409, as well as the highly efficient side oiling lubrication system, which assured maximum oil flow to the main and connecting rod bearings at all times. Later blocks intended for performance use had the main oil gallery moved up to the cam bearing bore area and provided priority main oiling, improving the oil system even further. Topic 366. The 366 CU in 6.0L big block V8 gasoline engine was used only in Chevrolet medium duty trucks and in school buses. It had a bore and a stroke of 3.935 in times 3.76 in 99.9 mm times 95.5 mm. This engine was made from the 1960s until the mid 1990s. The 366 used four rings on the pistons, as it was designed from the very beginning as a truck engine. The 366 was produced only as a tall deck engine, with a deck 0.4 in 10 mm taller than the 396, 402, and 454 short deck big blocks. Topic. 396 and 402 The 396 CU in 6.5L V8 was introduced in the 1965 Corvette as the L78 option and in the Z16 Chevelle as the L37 option. It had a bore X stroke of 4.094 in times 3.760 in 104 mm times 95.5 mm, and produced 375 bhp 380 PS, 280 kW at 5,600 revolutions per minute and 415 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 revolutions per minute. The solid lifter version was capable of being operated in the upper 6,000 revolutions per minute range, and when installed in the 1965 Corvette, was factory rated at 425 horsepower (317 kilowatts). Introduced in 1970, the 402 CU in 6.6L was a 396 CU in 6.5L bored out by 0.03 in 0.76 mm. Despite the fact that it was 6 cubic inches 98 cc larger, Chevrolet continued marketing it under the popular 396 label in the smaller cars while at the same time labeling it Turbo Jet 400 in the full size cars. Power ratings by year 1965 to 375 HP, 280 kilowatts, 425 horsepower, 317 kilowatts. 
1966 to 325 hp 242 kilowatts 350 horsepower 261 kilowatts 360 horsepower 268 kilowatts 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts 1967 to 325 hp 242 kilowatts 350 horsepower 261 kilowatts 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts 1968 to 325 hp 242 kilowatts 350 horsepower 261 kilowatts 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts 1969 to 265 hp 198 kilowatts 2 barrels 325 horsepower 242 kilowatts 350 horsepower 261 kilowatts 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts 1970 to 330 hp 246 kilowatts 350 horsepower 261 kilowatts 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts 1971 to 300 hp 224 kilowatts sae gross while sae net was 260 horsepower 194 kilowatts for dual exhaust and 206 horsepower 154 kilowatts for single exhaust 1972 to 240 hp 179 kilowatts sae net for dual exhaust and 210 horsepower 157 kilowatts sae net for single exhaust used in 1965 chevrolet corvette 1965 to 1972 chevrolet chevelle 1967 to 1972 chevrolet camaro 1968 to 1970 Chevrolet Nova 1970 to 1972 Chevrolet Monte Carlo Chevrolet Trucks 1965 to 1972 Chevrolet Biscayne Chevrolet Bel Air Chevrolet Impala Chevrolet Impala SS Chevrolet Caprice 396 and 402 production codes 396L34, produced 1966 9, 10.25, 1 compression, Holly, Qjet 1968-9, carburetor, hydraulic lifters, oval port closed chamber heads, forged steel crankshaft, and two bolt main caps. It produced 350 to 360 horsepower, 261 to 268 kilowatts. L35 produced 1965 to 9 had 10.25 1 compression Q jet carburetor forged steel 1965 to 7 or nodular iron 1968 to 9 crankshaft hydraulic lifters oval port closed chamber heads and two bolt main caps it produced 325 horsepower 242 kilowatts L37, similar to L78 except for having hydraulic lifters and slightly milder cam, two bolt main caps, designed specifically for the 1965 Z16 Chevelle. L66, produced 1969, rare two barrel carburetor, 9 to 1 compression, modular iron crankshaft, hydraulic lifters, oval port closed chamber heads, and two bolt main caps. It produced 265 horsepower, 198 kilowatts. L78, produced 1965 to 9, had a Holly 800 cubic feet per minute, 23 cubic meters per minute carburetor, compression ratio 11 to 1, forged pop top pistons, aluminum high rise intake manifold, steel crankshaft, solid lifter cam, same as the L72, rectangular square port closed chamber heads, and four bolt main caps. 
it produced 375 bhp 280 kilowatts in mid-size cars 425 bhp 317 kilowatts in corvettes 0.402 ls3 produced 1972 10.251 or 8.51 compression hydraulic lifters nodular iron crankshaft and two bolt main caps it produced 330 horsepower 246 kilowatts 1970 300 horsepower 224 kilowatts 1971 210 or 240 horsepower 157 or 179 kilowatts 1972 net horsepower single or dual exhaust L34 produced 1970 same as 396 CU in 6.5 L L34 L78 produced 1970 same as 396 CU in 6.5 L topic 427 The highly successful and versatile 427 CU in 7.0 L version of the Mark IV engine was introduced in 1966 as a production engine option for full-sized Chevrolets and Corvettes. The bore was increased to 4 and a quarter in 108 mm with power ratings varying widely depending on the application. There were smooth running versions with hydraulic lifters suitable for powering the family station wagon, as well as rough idling, high revving solid lifter models usually applied to a minimally equipped, plain looking, two door Biscayne sedan fitted with the 425 horsepower 317 kilowatts version of the 427 RPOL 72. Perhaps the ultimate 427 for street applications was the 435 bhp 441 PS 324 kilowatts at 5800 revolutions per minute and 460 pound feet 624 Nm at 4000 revolutions per minute of torque L71 version available in 1967 to 1969 Corvettes and in the Italian ISO Griffo this engine was identical to the 425 horsepower 317 kilowatts L72 427 first introduced in 1966 but was fitted with 3x2 barrel holly carburetors known as tri power in lieu of the L72's single four barrel carburetor both engines used the same high lift, long duration, high overlap camshaft and large port, cast iron heads to maximize cylinder head airflow and, hence, engine power at elevated engine operating speeds. Consequently, the engines offered very similar performance and resulted in a car whose performance was described by one automotive journalist as, "...the ultimate in sheer neck snapping overkill." Typical magazine road tests of the day yielded 0 to 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour in 5.6 seconds and 1 quarter mile, 402 meters in 13.8 second at 104 miles per hour, 167 kilometers per hour range for both the L72 and L71. In 2011, Super Chevy magazine conducted a chassis dynamometer test of a well-documented production line stock but well-tuned L72 COPO Camaro and recorded a peak 287 horsepower 214 kilowatts at the rear wheels demonstrating the substantial difference between 1960s era SAE gross horsepower ratings and horsepower at the wheels on a chassis dynamometer Wheel horsepower which is obtained at the drive wheels and thus takes into account drivetrain power loss does not equate to SAE net HP which is horsepower at the flywheel, like SAE gross, but with all accessories included, unlike SAE gross. The RPO L89 was an L71 fitted with aluminum heads. While this option produced no power advantage, it did reduce engine and hence vehicle weight by roughly 75 pounds, 34 kilograms. 
This resulted in superior vehicle weight distribution for improved handling, although the difference in straight line performance was negligible. The 1969 1 Zwati version of the 427 engine was developed primarily for Can Am racing, where it was very successful in cars like the McLaren M8B. The 1 Zwati specifications were nearly identical to the production L88 version of the 427, but featured an all aluminum cylinder block, in addition to aluminum cylinder heads, which dropped the total engine weight into small block territory. Approximately. 575 pounds or 261 kilograms dressed. The first Corvette RP01 Zwati engine package was built in late fall 1968 and featured aluminum closed chamber heads, until sometime in 1969, when the Corvette 1 Zwati engine changed to having open combustion chamber aluminum cylinder heads, as the 1969 L88 had. The 1 Zwati engine also featured a lightweight aluminum water pump, a camshaft that was slightly hotter than the L88s, and a specially tuned aluminum intake manifold. Like the L88, the 1 Zwati required 103 octane RON minimum fuel, used an unshrouded radiator, and had poor low speed idle qualities, all of which made the two engines largely unsuitable for street use. 102 octane RON Sunoco 260 represented the highest octane gasoline sold at common retail stations. As impressive as the 1 Zwati was in its day, actual engine dyno tests of a certified production line stock 1 Zwati revealed 376 horsepower 280 kilowatts SAE net with output swelling to 524 horsepower 391 kilowatts SAE gross with the help of optimal carb and ignition tuning, open long tube racing headers, and with no power sapping engine accessories or air cleaner in place. A second engine dyno test conducted on a second production line stock but recently rebuilt and partially blueprinted one Zwati revealed nearly identical figures for the various gross conditions. Period magazine tests of the one Zwati were quite rare due to the rarity of the engine itself. High performance cars tested a production line stock, but well tuned, example and recorded a 13.1 second, 110 miles per hour, 180 kilometers per hour, one quarter mile, 402 meters, which correlates quite well with the previously referenced 376 horsepower, 280 kilowatts SAE net figure. Super Stock and Drag Racing magazine recorded an 11.62 second, 122.15 miles per hour, 196.58 kilometers per hour, one quarter mile, 402 meters, in a one Zwati Camaro that was professionally tuned and driven by drag racing legend Dick Herrell. Although that car was also equipped with open long tube S and S equal length headers, drag slicks, and minor suspension modifications. Using Patrick Hale's power speed formula, the 122.15 miles per hour, 196.58 kilometers per hour trap speed indicated low 11 second ET elapsed time potential, e.g., with larger drag slicks, and suggested something on the order of 495 horsepower, 369 kilowatts, as installed in that modified configuration. This large difference in power suggests that the OEM exhaust manifolds and exhaust system were highly restrictive in the 1 Zwati application, as was also the case with the similar L88. The $4,718 cost of the 1 Zwati option doubled the price of the 1969 Corvette, but resulted in a car with exceptional performance for its day. Just two production Corvettes, factory option at dealer, and 69 Camaros, non-dealer option from factory, COP09560, were built with the one Zwati. Chevrolet capitalized on the versatility of the 427 design by producing a wide variety of high-performance, over-the-counter engine components as well as ready-to-race replacement engines in shipping crates. Some of the components were developed to enhance the engine's reliability during high RPM operation, possibly justifying the use of the description heavy duty. 
However, most of these items were racing parts originally designed for Can-Am competition that found their way onto dealers' shelves, and were meant to boost the engine's power output. Beginning in 1969, the highest performance 427 models were fitted with the new open versus closed chamber cylinder heads, along with design improvements in crankshafts, connecting rods, and pistons, adopted from the Can-Am development program. Chevrolet gave all 427 engines except the one Swati a torque rating of 460 pound-feet Notes, 1966–1969 Chevrolet Biscayne 1966–1969 Chevrolet Caprice 1966–1969 Chevrolet Impala 1966–1969 Chevrolet Corvette 1968–1969 Chevrolet Camaro most were dealers installed, but in 1969 both the L72 and the minus one Zwatties were factory options 427 production codes LS1, produced 1969, 10.25, 1 compression, Q-jet carburetor, oval port closed chamber heads, hydraulic lifters, nodular iron crankshaft, and two bolt main caps. It produced 335 horsepower 250 kilowatts. L36, produced 1966-9, had 10.25, 1 compression, Holly or Q-jet carburetor, nodular iron crankshaft, hydraulic lifters, oval port closed chamber heads, and two bolt main caps. It produced 385 horsepower 287 kilowatts in 1967-68 full-size cars, 390 horsepower 291 kilowatts in 1969 full-size cars and Corvettes by exhaust system. L68, produced 1967-9, had 10.25, one compression, tri-power, nodular iron crankshaft, hydraulic lifters, aluminum oval port closed chamber heads, and two bolt main caps. It produced 400 horsepower 298 kilowatts, and was used in Corvettes. The big block was expanded again, for 1970, to 454 cu in 7.4 L, with a bore X stroke of 4 and a quarter in times 4 in 108.0 mm times 101.6 mm. The 1970 Chevrolet Corvette LS5 version of this engine was factory rated at 390 bhp, 395 PS, 291 kilowatts and 500 pound-feet, 678 Nm, and the LS6 engine equipped with a single four-barrel 800 cubic feet per minute, 23 cubic meters per minute Holly carburetor was upgraded to 450 bhp, 456 PS, 300 136 kilowatts at 5600 revolutions per minute and 500 pound feet 678 nm at 3600 revolutions per minute of torque it has been suggested that the ls6 was substantially underrated from the factory which was somewhat common practice by the american car makers and that the engine actually produced well over 500 horsepower 373 kilowatts as delivered from the factory Indeed, the AHRA ASA showroom stock automatic class record holding Chevelle LS6 for the 1970 season posted a best of season trap speed of 106.76 miles per hour, 172 kilometers per hour, which suggests something on the order of 350 as installed. SAE net HP for a 3,900 pounds, 1,769 kilograms car and driver combination. Indeed, Super Chevy magazine conducted a chassis dyno test of a well-documented, well-tuned, but production line stock 1970 LS6 Chevelle and recorded 283 peak HP at the wheels, a figure that lines up quite well with the previously referenced 350 SAE net HP figure. 
an even more powerful version, producing 465 horsepower, 347 kilowatts, and 610 pound-feet, 827 Nm of the 454, then dubbed LS7, not to be confused with the modern mid 2000s 7-liter Chevrolet Corvette engine that powered the C6Z06 was also developed. Several LS7 intake manifolds were individually produced and sold to the general public by a few Chevrolet dealers as optional performance parts. The LS7 was later offered as a crate engine from Chevrolet Performance with an officially rated power minimum of 500 horsepower, 373 kilowatts gross. In 1971, the LS5 produced 365 horsepower, 272 kilowatts, and 550 pound-feet, 746 Nm, and the LS6 option came in at 425 horsepower, 317 kilowatts, and 575 pound-feet, 780 Nm. In 1972, only the LS5 remained, when SAE net power ratings and the move towards emission compliance resulted in a temporary output decline, due to lowered compression, to about 270 horsepower 201 kilowatts and 468 pound-feet the 1973 LS4 produced 275 horsepower, 205 kilowatts, and 468 pound-feet, 635 Nm, with 5 horsepower, 4 kilowatts, and 10 pound-feet, 14 Nm, gone the following year. Hardened valve seats further increased reliability and helped allow these engines to last much longer than the earlier versions, even without the protection previously provided by leaded fuel. 1974 was the last year of the 454 in the Corvette, although the Chevelle offered it in the first half of the 1975 model year. It was also available in the full-size Impala, Caprice through model year 1976. 1970-1976 Chevrolet Caprice 1970-1975 Chevrolet Chevelle 1970–1975 Chevrolet Monte Carlo 1970–1975 Chevrolet El Camino 1971–1972 GMC Sprint 1970–1974 Chevrolet Corvette Topic L19 General Motors introduced EFI in 1987, which was found on GM 2500 and 3500 trucks. The 454 EFI version was rated from 230 horsepower, 172 kilowatts to 255 horsepower, 190 kilowatts and from 385 pound-feet, 522 Nm to 405 pound-feet, 549 Nm of torque. 1987 to 1990 Chevrolet CK 1987 GMC Suncrest <laughs> <laughs> Commercial applications Mark IV engines saw extensive application in Chevrolet and GMC medium-duty trucks, as well as in Blue Bird Corporation's All-American and TC-2000 transit buses the latter up until 1995, using a 427 with purpose-built carburetor. In addition to the 427, a 366 CU in L version was produced for the commercial market. Both the 366 and 427 commercial versions were built with a raised deck, 4-bolt main bearing cap cylinder to accommodate an extra oil control ring on the pistons. Unfortunately, the raised deck design complicated the use of the block in racing applications, as standard intake manifolds required spaces for proper fit. Distributors with adjustable collars that allowed adjustments to the length of the distributor shaft also had to be used with 366 and 427 truck blocks. 
Mark IV engines also found themselves widely used in power boats, a natural application for these robust power plants. Many of these engines were ordinary Chevrolet production models that were fitted with the necessary accessories and drive system to adapt them to marine propulsion. Mercury Marine, in particular, was a major user of the Mark IV in marine drives, and relabeled the engines with their corporate logo. <laughs> Generation V General Motors changed from using the Mark designation to the Generation designation because Ford Motor Company owns the Mark naming rights as it was used on some Lincoln automobile models. For 1991, General Motors made significant changes to the big block, resulting in the Generation V. The block received a one piece rear seal, and all blocks received four bolt mains. Additionally the main oil galley was moved from near the oil pan to near the camshaft. Also the valve train became non-adjustable and the provisions for a mechanical fuel pump were eliminated. Cast aluminum rocker covers were fitted in place of stamped steel covers. <laughs> L19 From 1991 the 454 was updated to the new Gen V block, crankshaft and heads. This engine was rated at 230 net HP, 380 feet-pounds net torque, and was discontinued after 1995, GM coming out with the Vortex 7400 in 1996. 502. The 502, with a 501.28 cu in 8.2 l total displacement, had a bore and stroke of 4.466 in times 4 in 113.4 mm times 101.6 mm and a cast iron 4 bolt main block. GM offered it in their performance parts catalog, available as multiple crate motors with horsepower ratings from 338 to 600 horsepower, 252 to 447 kilowatts, and torque of 470 to 567 pound-feet, 637 to 769 Nm in base and deluxe packages. The Ram Jet 502 The 496 horsepower 370 kilowatts 565 pound feet 766 Nm crate motor was offered with fuel injection and came as a turnkey setup which included all the wiring and electronics needed to operate in any vehicle It was also used in marine applications Topic 572 General Motors began offering a newly developed 572 CU in 9.4L in 1998 to the aftermarket via its GM Performance Parts division. This engine has a bore and a stroke of 4.56 in times 4 and 3 8 in 115.8 mm times 111.1 mm. This is a 620 horsepower, 462 kilowatts, and 650 pound-feet, 881 Nm version, designated ZZ 572 620 deluxe, capable of running on 92 octane pump gasoline for street applications. Another version of the same engine is available as a high compression variant, codenamed ZZ572, 720R Deluxe, generating a minimum of 720 horsepower, 537 kilowatts on high octane, i.e. race gas. Topic 
The Vortex 7400L 29 7.4L 454 cu in V8 was a truck version of the Chevrolet big block engine. Introduced in 1996, it was produced for five years, until replaced by the Vortec 8100. Although introduced as the Vortec 7400 in 1996, it was basically a 454 big block with a hydraulic roller cam, parts more suitable for use in light-duty trucks, and more advanced technology. The engine had MPFI multi-port fuel injection, which gave slightly more power and better fuel economy, and two valves per cylinder. The engine had a bore and stroke of 4 and a quarter in times 4 in 108.0 mm times 101.6 mm, producing 290 horsepower, 216 kilowatts at 4000 revolutions per minute and 410 pound feet, 556 Nm at 3200 revolutions per minute. L29 applications 1996 to 2000 Chevrolet GMC C K G M T 400 platform trucks 2500 and 3500. 1996 to 1999 Chevrolet Suburban 2500 GMC Suburban 2500 option. 1996 to 2000 Chevrolet Express three quarters or one ton. Topic L21. The Vortex 7400L21 was a commercial version of the Chevrolet big block engine used in the medium-duty truck platform. Its design shared much with the L29 454, but with the addition of forged pistons and crankshaft and coil near plug ignition. It had slightly reduced power compared to the L29 454 and used a different PCM. The L21 was paired with the early four-speed Allison automatic transmission or manual transmission, depending on the application. L21 applications 1998-2001 Chevrolet Kodiak, GMC Topkick, Isuzu H-Series 4500-5500 1998-2001 Kodiak, Topkick 1998-2001 P12HD Motorhome Chassis. The workhorse W20 is a clone of the P12 chassis. Topic: <laughs> Generation 7 Topic L18 The Vortec 8100L18 was a V8 truck engine. It was a redesigned Chevrolet big block engine and was introduced with the 2001 full-size pickup trucks. It is an all-iron engine block and heads with two valves per cylinder. It retained the same bore diameter as the old 7.4L 454cu in big blocks, but the stroke was upped by 9.4 mm in, to reach 496cu in 8.1L, for a total bore and stroke of 4 and a quarter in times 4.37 in 108mm times 111mm. Power output ranged from 340 to 550 horsepower, 254 to 410 kilowatts, and torque from 455 to 690 pound-feet, 617 to 936 Nm. Other important differences between the Vortec 8100 and older big blocks include a changed firing order 1, 8, 7, 2, 6, 5, 4, 3, a new 18-bolt head bolt pattern, longer connecting rods, different symmetrical intake ports, different oil pan rails and the use of metric threads throughout the engine. The fuel injection system for the Vortec 8100 is nearly identical to that used on Gen 3 engines, right down to the fuel and spark tables in the AQ. Vortec 8100s were built at GM's Tonawanda engine plant. The last L18 was manufactured in December 2009. 
L18 applications, GM sold the Vortec 8100 to Workhorse now a division of Navistar, making it one of the most popular engine choices in gas-powered class of motorhomes during the first decade of this century. GM stopped installing big block V8s in the Silverado HD trucks when the GMT 800 series was discontinued in 2007. Chevrolet Silverado, GMC Sierra 2500 HD and 3500 HD option Chevrolet Suburban, GMC Yukon XL 2500 option Chevrolet Express 3 quarters or 1 ton Chevrolet Avalanche 2500 STD on GMT 800 2500 Chevrolet Kodiak Workhorse Class A Motorhomes. T98 Combat Armored Vehicles U-Haul's 26-foot truck. Malibu Boats, e.g. Wakesetter. Mastercraft Boats Aftermarket Many custom engine builders across the United States, as well as a large variety of aftermarket components manufactured for the big block family, make it possible to build a complete big block engine that contains no Chevrolet components. Blocks made of both iron and aluminum alloys, for many different purposes e.g., street use, racing, etc. Are available in stock or modified configurations, as well as with increased deck height to allow for a longer stroke or more favorable rod length ratios, depending on intent, providing the ability to make engines with capacities of 632 cubic inch (10.4 L), 798 cubic inch (13.1 L), and as large as 1,005.8 cubic inch (16.5 L). Topic. See also From the 1950s through the 1970s, each GM division had its own V8 engine family. Many were shared with other divisions, but each design is most closely associated with its own division. Buick V8 engine Cadillac V8 engine Chevrolet small block engine GMC V8 engine Oldsmobile V8 engine Pontiac V8 engine Holden V8 engine M later standardized on the later generations of the Chevrolet design GM Lieutenant engine — Generation 2 small block GM LS engine — Generation 3 — IV small block List of GM engines competitors equivalent offerings Chrysler B engine — Wedge Chrysler Hemi engine, Hemi Ford 385 engine, big block Ford Fay engine, medium block Topic. Footnotes Topic. Citations Topic. Further reading Peter C. Sessler Ultimate American V8 Engine Data Book. Motorbooks, MBI Publishing Company. ISBN 0-7603-0489-0.